How's it from Johannesburg, South Africa? My name is Trenton Birch. I head up Chiba Cannabis Academy. We are um, one of the educators for cannabis and hemp on the African continent, doing things all across this magical continent. And uh, I'm very excited about today's session because it's a really important time for the hemp industry, especially in South Africa. We have planting season around the corner, um, but many people who have licenses for hemp don't actually know why they're growing hemp. Uh, and if you don't know why you're growing hemp, it's really difficult to figure out what genetics you use, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite complex. And one of the low-hanging fruits at the moment is actually working with hempcrete, which is, as we call it, a low-tech application in the space. And there's an opportunity for us to monetize uh, hemp that is cultivated and uh, processed at the end of season. So I'm very excited about this webinar. We're going to dig into all kinds of things. We've got guests from all over the world, France, Sweden, the Eastern Cape, Joburg, Cape Town. And we're going to unpack the whole hemp industry and just to really understand the nuances, the challenges, the benefits of building with hemp, which is really, really sustainable. Before we do that, uh, we do have a hemp creek course that is coming up. So uh, I'm going to just play a quick video and then we're going to chat to the custodian of the course from Chiba Cannabis Academy, Fivo Artemides. Um, but we'll come back with that. This deck. is a brick, but it's not a brick like this or a brick like this. This brick is made from the beautiful hemp plant. So if you'd like to learn how to make hemp bricks and hemp crete, join us on Africa's first accredited course in partnership with Afrimat Hemp, where we teach you how to build with hemp and hempcrete. This course is accredited for CPD points with the South African Council for Architectural Professionals, as well as the Engineering Council of South Africa. Hempcrete and hemp bricks are sustainable and renewable. They are non-toxic. They are great for carbon sequestration. They are fire resistant, mold resistant, they regulate humidity and a whole bunch of other things. So if you'd like to learn how to build with this, which is super important for our country, join us on this incredible course. Here we go, and here we have the man who has been leading that course, uh, Fivo Artemides. Welcome to uh, this uh, webinar. Very excited to hear more about this course. I know that... Uh, We've run it, uh, we've, well, we've run sort of hemp courses a few times, but this particular course is the second time we've run it. So, yeah, just give us a bit of insight into what people can expect. Oh, thank you so much, Trenton, and good evening. Good evening to all the attendees as well. This is going to be a, a great webinar for people who are interested in looking at, like you said, one of these low-tech applications with hemp. Uh, it's a very versatile product, as we all know, and majority of the biomass of the plant is the herd or shiv. And being able to use that in the green building environment is really something that can combat the resource intensive industry of the construction industry in uh, South Africa and in the world. And it's going to be great to listen to Daniel and Clara and Sean. Um, these are all people that have expertise in the industry and they've spent years with this plant and in the in this kind of value chain of using it as a green building material. So. It takes time to develop skills and knowledge about this type of building material. And uh, it's a great opportunity for everyone in the webinar to pay attention and, you know, understand some of the challenges and opportunities. But an even greater opportunity is uh, the Hempcrete building course that we're hosting uh, in the beginning of September on the 1st and 2nd of September. And this course is a two day workshop, um, as mentioned in your video, it's accredited with the ECSA and the South African uh, Council of Architectural Professions. It's two category one uh, level um, CPD points. So for architects and engineers, this is something that can uh, help with the CPD. Um, and we actually built this to create the awareness and to give people the skills of understanding. Number one, um, in, on day one, we're doing theory. It's gonna be discussing a lot about the technicalities, about the beneficial properties of hempcrete, how to use it in different types of uh, manual applications, precast bricks, precast walls, looking at it from an insulatory perspective, um, its breathability, like you mentioned, its uh, hydroscopicity, looking at other types of thermal properties, as well as its um, ability to be a carbon neutral product. And that's what's really amazing is in the growth stage of this plant, it's able to sequester you know, from six to 12 tons of carbon per hectare and store that. Um, and when it's used in the performance stage, it actually recarbonates due to the lime and uh, the water and, and shiv and herd. Um, so this actually just proves that 
it being used, its whole life cycle analysis, the embodied energy of this building material is something that can really impact and build healthy homes. No more sick house syndrome. Um, so on day one, we really cover the landscape of uh, the value chain of the properties of hemp. And um, I talk a lot to that. And then Sean speaks about her on the ground experience and challenges and her ways of working with um, the building material, some of the things that she's learned along the way in terms of mixing it with other types of indigenous materials around your area. So in that way, you actually lower the carbon footprint of the infrastructure that you're building, whatever it might be. And then at the end of day one, we have Clara who really comes in and speaks about a more mature industry and a lot about her expertise from, you know, even being in the cultivation space now, which has been really exciting for her and also on the building side. And then day two is where um, you get your hands dirty. And this is something that uh, helps with, you know, just understanding how to use the plant, um, how to use the building and the bricks, how to make manual bricks and uh, cast blocks. Um, these are standard brick size, how to build a wall and how to create the pressure between the brick because it's a very lightweight material. So using the line binder, you actually need to create pressure so that it can sit and be bound together and what type of understanding you need with that. So it's a great workshop course and we are really um, excited to host this one and we're looking forward to seeing you guys there. And another amazing thing that comes to all the webinar attendees here is that we, you're all lucky enough to have a discount to the course. Um, we thought for everyone who's interested, this is something that can you know boost your incentive to join the course. So Hempcrete 20 as the voucher or coupon code when you log into Chiba, um, maybe in the chat, we can put the link to the website or you can check out uh, Chiba Africa um, on Google. Um, and with this course, you know, it being centered around the building environment, Chiba Africa off offers a multitude of different courses in the value chain from understanding being an, uh, let's say, amateur grower, you know, how to prevent uh, diseases, how to ensure that your produce that you want to use, whether you're a responsible adult or in whatever fashion for a private club, how to ensure that it's healthy um, and that you're actually preventing yourself from using harmful fertilizers, um, you're curing it the right way. So across the whole value chain from cultivation to extraction, um, as well as other types of hemp offerings. So another amazing hemp offering that we have is coming up on the 7th of September. It's a one day hemp workshop where we really cover some of the challenges currently around the permits, um, the things to consider in permitting, how to understand your agronomic practice, your genetic and your environment, why that genetic can perform well in your area, and then also understanding your soil and harvesting. And um, when you harvest this crop, it's got it's a very fibrous crop. So the timing of your harvesting is important. A lot of lignin and pectin build it up the, at the bottom of the base of the stalk once it goes into flowering. So if you're for grain and you're harvesting for biomass, how do you ensure that you harvest at the right time for seed maturity? And um, all these types of nuances that hemp is slowly starting to gather a lot of momentum about and people are really inquiring. Um, I think it's gone from being, uh, you know, this very, you know, everyone wants to jump into it to everyone's being a little bit more careful. And I, I actually really am excited for this because I think it's going to be a lot more of a strategic approach to the industry. And, um, you know, the understanding of the genetic genetics we use in our latitude and heat and temperature is something that we're going to speak about in this workshop. So Trent Sanya, thank you so much for the time. Well, Thanks for I all just, the I just, I just want to make it clear. So all <laughs> this is, okay, is water, lime, and, and, and the inner, inner basically woody core of, the hemp stalk and that's it and there's a chemical bond that happens between those two um and it's just completely mind-blowing you know it's completely sustainable it helps us move towards the united nations sustainable development goals which as we know are quite urgent um so it's yeah it's fantastic uh, so thanks so much for that fever um hopefully we'll uh, get to uh, this course going uh, so within in uh, between midrand and ravonia with vital veggies or one of our farm partners in midrand um we will be giving a course away as well to us so stay tuned for that um, but yeah, thanks so much, Viva, and uh, we appreciate that, and we'll speak to you later. Um, cool. So next up, I'm going to bring in our guests uh, from all across the planet. Um, we just want to bring them in, Mr. Linder, so we can uh, have a chat with them. Uh, here we go. There's Clara. Hi, Clara. How are you doing? I'm good, thank from you. From Sweden. There's Daniel from the Alps in France on holiday. Thank you for making the time to be here. And uh, our very own Sunshine Blow, who's uh, 
based in the Eastern Cape, who's been at the forefront of driving sort of uh, hemp uh, for the for the last, what, 25 years, maybe? Uh, a long time and has some amazing, incredible experience and also give us a bit of a lens of how, you know, hemp and the hempcrete industry can also benefit people on the ground in rural, rural communities and rural areas. Um, unfortunately, Sean uh, from Afrimat Hemp is having a few challenges getting online, but we are trying to work on that, so we'll see if we can get it in. But guys, I'm just going to go around the room uh, and I'd like you guys just to introduce yourself, where you're from, how long you've been in the industry, uh, and just give us a bit of insight into your background. Clara, uh, let's start with you. Over to you. Okay, thank you. First and foremost, thank you so much, uh, Sheba, for, uh, and Friends of Hemp of South Africa for hosting this webinar and for all the hemp courses that you do. Uh, I'm really grateful and excited to be here. Uh, so, uh, who am I? And uh, yeah, short introduction. Uh, I met hemp in South Africa 2003 through Tony Budden. And uh, that was when I was an engineering student at CPUT, Cape Technical Peninsula University. And then I started to get really curious around sustainable building materials and uh, really started to follow hemp and read about hemp. And then fast forward to 2018, I took a hempcrete course uh, with L'Ecole Nationale de Chambre, uh, Remy Shorda, who wasn't there, um, and uh, also the Nordic Hemp Building School. And uh, I got so excited about hemp, so I quit my uh, ordinary job and I jumped into the hemp field. And then I was also granted uh, uh, the, the national, uh, the county environmental fund to arrange a hempcrete building course. And funny enough, uh, Daniel uh, Davillier was there in the course. And then I've been uh, growing hemp for the last five years. And uh, since one year back, I'm the CEO and founder of the protein and carbon farming startup company uh, called Swedish Hemp Industries. So we focus on the full plant business. We sell the seeds to food and beverage and cosmetics. And then our re residual waste streams becomes bio-based uh, carbon dioxide storage dreams. So we sell those in larger volumes to the whatever industry that wants to have um, fill-in material that is uh, carbon storing. Uh, and then also I've been building, um, being part of a great team of building uh, hempcrete houses in Sweden this, for this is this is one of them, Clara. I think this is one of the ones you've been busy with. Yeah, yeah that's really beautiful. Uh, we built that in May uh, 2022, and this is from June 2023. So that's one of the the homes. So uh, I think cool. that's enough, and I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited uh, that Daniel is here, uh, who has been a mentor and somebody I really look up to. And also Sunshine, who I believe I met in Canada. <laughs> and also super excited to meet Sean from Afromat Hemp. So thank you so much and looking forward to our discussion. Great, thank you. We've got people from Ecuador, we've got people from Las Vegas, we've got people from uh, Ricky Stones here from the Eastern Cape. So this really is a global industry. So it's very exciting to see everybody coming together to share the knowledge. Uh, Daniel, over to you. If you could just give us an introduction. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, you just need to unmute. Uh, can you just do that, Linda? Sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm Daniel Davila. I have worked for 35 years in lime industry uh, in the biggest airline producer uh, in the world. And uh, inside this, um, this uh, group, I developed uh, all the applications of lime for the construction. And uh, 25, 20, 30 years ago, we we have developed uh, binders for uh, M3. And uh, we start to to produce this line special for M3. And we we have developed uh, with Construire en Chambre. I'm also vice president of Construire en Chambre. Uh, we developed all the standards for uh, construction with lime in France with a standard for the hemp, standard for the binders, standard for, for uh, construction with uh, hemp. We have developed also with partners uh, spray machines. And now we develop with uh, partners um, 
panel of uh, panel of uh, <coughs> We know in France, we uh, know uh, I'm working now for until one year in the Saint Gobain group for uh, Saint Gobain Weber France. I'm working uh, with them to develop MCRIT inside the Saint Gobain group. And we have uh, helped some countries to, to develop MCRIT in their country, in their country like in uh, Australia, in uh, New Zealand, in uh, uh, and everywhere in the world, and also with Clara. Uh, and uh, in France, we, we the, the MCRIT industry is developing uh, a lot. Uh, we are, for the time being, we, are, um, we can't uh, go over 28 meters because of fire standards in, uh, in Europe. But we, we work a lot to, to develop uh, for higher buildings. The, the, we have made uh, six or seven uh, buildings with uh, eight stores, eight uh, level, uh, yeah. and we develop and create for all the all the customers. And, the, and these are some of the buildings that you've worked on, um, Daniel. Just uh, yes. showing here. It, it shows was the, the diversity. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we we make and create for for all types of uh, of construction. Yes. Yeah, great. Well, thank you for being here. I know you're on holiday in the Alps, so we really appreciate you making the time. It's great to have you here. Um, we look forward to unpacking things. Uh, Sunshine, over to you. If you could just let us know, you know, who you are, where you're from, and just give a bit of background. That would be amazing. Uh, thanks, uh, Trenton. Uh, first and foremost, let me uh, thanks uh, Chiba and Friends of Fem South Africa for providing uh, us, uh, the ECRDA, with this platform uh, to share with uh, the specialists uh, that are here today. Uh, my name is Sunshine Blow. I come from the Eastern Cape. Um, I regard myself as one of those uh, lucky people uh, that were, you know, there at the right time when uh, the hemp uh, research work uh, commenced. Uh, as far back as in 1998. I work for the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research um, with uh, our center based uh, in Port Elizabeth. Uh, and this is where, uh, you know, I came across uh, this wonderful plant uh, where we were focusing uh, uh, on what we call your post-gate farm activity uh, to look at the differentiated products that could come from uh, hemp uh, products like your textiles, how we can mechanically modify uh, the textile to be cotton-like uh, so that we can blend it with cotton and spin uh, different yarns. Uh, we also focus on how we can add a uh, value or on the wood decor uh, because our approach from the onset was uh, looking at the total use of the plant uh, here in uh, the Eastern Cape in particularly, as I've actually indicated now, I work uh, for the Eastern Cape Rural Development Agency. Uh, the Eastern Cape Rural Development Agency is the entity of the provincial government here in the Eastern Cape, uh, given the mandate to coordinate uh, cannabis industry development uh, here in the province. Uh, and I think uh, my, uh, you know, the guest and fellow panelists uh, present in this webinar, they know that the Eastern Cape uh, has been leading for many, many years, uh, you know, in, the, in producing uh, marijuana. Uh, and the topic uh, for today is so important uh, to us here in the Eastern Cape, particularly our Dhaka growing belt, uh, because the current reality we sit uh, with, uh, you know, your biomass material, uh, that the indigenous cannabis growers, uh, you know, can use to earn an extra income from their primary produce uh, in an area like we are today uh, discussing. Uh, and this, uh, as uh, your facilitator correctly pointed out, this is a low-tech, low-hanging fruit, uh, uh, you know, you know low-hanging fruit, and it provides us an opportunity for our mainstreaming and capacitation of our indigenous cannabis growers 
in the Pondoland uh, uh, area, which numbers in tens of thousands, uh, and I'm talking of individual household. Uh, and if this technology can be, uh, you know, used by our people, it will uplift uh, individual household, uh, you know, out of poverty, uh, because we would have a differentiated uh, possible application use of the biomass straw that currently is not uh, fully utilized. So this is how I find current topic very relevant uh, to the work uh, that we are doing here in the province of the Eastern Cape. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Tony, uh, Trenton. Thanks, thanks for that, Sunshine. I think, uh, you know, just to for, for, for the international guests, I mean, the Eastern Cape region is uh, has a very, very deep legacy for, for cannabis, uh, for high THC cannabis. Um, so we're also dealing with, you know, where we plant hemp, we don't cross pollination, uh, but it's very, very important. We have a lot of uh, legacy farmers here. We have a lot of rural areas that are underserved and uh, are, are lacking financial resources. So hemp is a really big deal for us. Also, we can we can cultivate here. We have you know great weather conditions, um, and uh, I think that we could become a major player in exporting you know hemp products to the rest of the world. Um, Sean, I'm glad you managed to join us. You do need to unmute your mic, uh, but yeah, if you could just tell us uh, where you're from and uh, what your experience is, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Thanks, Trenton. Thanks, uh, team from Sheba. And yeah, I'm glad that I could finally join. Um, it's also nice to meet all the panelists. Um, yeah, so my background's in architecture, and I am currently working as a consultant or a sustainability consultant for um, Afrimad Hemp. So Afrimad Hemp is a company in South Africa that um, manufactures uh, hemp creed blocks at the moment um, yeah so my role is uh, in the company is just to provide um, sort of technical support to architects but also um, involved in the research and development of our product and looking into various um, different um, new products but also um, yeah just uh, getting the the current products uh, through all the certification that is needed in South Africa and uh, yeah, all kinds of things. Um, yeah, so I fell in love with hempcrete in uh, probably around 2017, 2018, when uh, I was taking part in a, we were building a house in Morocco and the neighbor next to us were, they were building a hempcrete house and I was severely impressed with the indoor climate of the actual mm. house and uh yeah so thank you for having me right. thanks so much sean yeah the afrimat temp are really pioneering um the the, lo the local south african industry in terms of you know the brick that i just picked up is actually from them uh we with the course that we run is a partnership with them um so you know it's not easy bringing on a new industry we're all trying to figure this out we're all trying to figure out the metrics and the uh, return on investments and but i think it's one of the most exciting industries of our time and this is definitely one of the catalyzing uh, topics that uh, can help bring hemp to the forefront. Uh, Daniel, you guys have been at this for a long time. You know, the, the French have a huge mm -hmm. reputation for, for, for hemp. Um, where are things at in terms of the hemp building industry in France? How, how fast is it moving? You know, do you have any idea how many houses have been built from hemp yet? Just give us a quick uh, overview of, of what, what the developments have been there recently. <clears throat> Uh, yes, uh, you, we, we, we started a long, long time ago, uh, 30 years ago, because uh, there was a hemp industry uh, in France and there was no uh, utilization of the, of the hemp sheets. And uh, we developed uh, hemp crates to develop, uh, to, to use all the, the, the plants and uh, to, to, to have a, a using of the hemp sheets. Now, the... the um, there is uh, the main market in France is uh, uh, spray uh, spray market for uh, for uh, um, uh, lots of uh, small company who are spraying for for uh, uh, building uh, houses uh, and uh, and now we develop a lot of panels empty panels for for high buildings uh, but we have to fight again uh, the the legislation of high buildings. And Daniel, but, just 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 a sec. When you say spray, you mean spraying on the sort of hempcrete plaster? No, yes, we, no, no. We we spray uh, on uh, on the shutter. We have a shutter. We spray uh, hempcrete 
and we have the the, the wood frame and uh, the wood frame is inside the the the, the end crease. so we we can uh, we, we can have a, a, a lime a lime render and a lime uh, plaster in the inside okay so and, and, and that, that that is a part is that is that a preferred building methodology as opposed to using bricks yes we there, there is a, a lots of there is bricks in france also but uh, brick is mainly used for uh, do it yourself uh, for uh, inside uh, inside um, uh, uh, insulation or, or, or so on but the uh, bricks there is uh, with the problem with, with bricks is that you have uh, uh, um, uh, a bridge a thermal bridge uh, at every uh, between every bricks there is a thermal bridge so uh, we we develop a lot uh, spraying uh, machines and the spraying system to avoid this problem of uh, of the of the join and the thermal bridge you you see what i mean yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. But there is also bricks for for small uh, construction for do it yourself construction uh, if if somebody wants to to uh, make an insulation of a wall of his house mm -hmm. it's very easy to use bricks but yeah. there is also uh, it, it's a main market for for the bricks yeah Okay, great. So um, that's so. And in terms of the sort of volume of, of building that's happening in the hemp space, is it is it really taken off, or is it still at infant stages in France? The the volume in France, I think, um, I think the volume is uh, between fifty thousand cubic meter. Or it it increases a lot. I have not all the the the, the market be, because there is a. Um, uh, sprayed, uh, sprayed, uh, many sprayed uh, small uh, uh, job sites, but I think the we are roughly at uh, uh, yes, uh, five, five, uh, fifty thousand cubic meters of uh, fifty, eighty, uh, ninety, okay. but okay. it's growing, it's growing. Right. And um, I think uh, the two last years we, we increased of thirty percent. The the market okay. is growing up very fast. Okay, fantastic, Daniel. Thanks for that insight, Clara. Let's cross over to Sweden. Um, and just yep. you know, I know you, I know you also have a structural background. But the first thing I wanted to just clarify: uh, hemp creep bricks are, are, to my knowledge, are not structurally. They don't hold weight, so you can build one floor. Am I correct on that? Can you just give us a bit of insight into the structural integrity of, uh, of hemp concrete? So uh, my, my knowledge and experience comes from spraying, as well as uh, the one that Daniel, because he's been my teacher. Uh, so bricks, I have no experience of, and uh, I would uh, figure the same as Daniel with the thermal bridges. So in Sweden, uh, first of all, it's very, very many rules in legislations and standards in Sweden, so it's difficult to get into the market. There are only a few uh, bigger in this small country, uh, but there is this new thing in Europe called the uh, EPD, Environmental Product Declaration, that uh, in Sweden to be to get a tender, to get to be the builder. Uh, and you have to show the EPD for each and every material in the houses down to the screw and the plug. So, and it has to show that there is not so much carbon dioxide pollution. Uh, and then when the hemp comes, even though we are not allowed to bring in the calculation of CO2 equivalent, this thing that it can store, but it it is using so much less uh, carbon dioxide also on its way to become the material. So it's out uh, conquering the conventional materials in terms of the different standards that is needed to be allowed to be in the bigger uh, building industry. I'm talking bigger industry now, not do it yourself and not smaller because their uh, price is still. Uh, the one that people at the end of the day and with inflation and everything that we're going through in the world uh, price comes before 
for example, good ventilation, as Sean was mentioning, that is something that is number one. It's a concerned family. Uh, they are ecological, they are, care about the environment, but they care also about themselves and their children might be allergic. Then those are the typical private clients that we see. Um, but bricks, no, we don't have. We have uh, spray, we have prefab, and we have uh, the fiber insulation, thermal fiber, yeah. but no yeah. bricks. Okay. And what's the pace like in Sweden in terms of the growth? I wouldn't be able to give you exact uh, statistics. Sure, but it feels like it's I can building. come back with that if you're going to send out uh, some kind of information. Oh, yes. It's it's uh, it's very it's coming up because because of this EPD thing that it's uh, more and more uh, building companies are also interested in the shives because they are decarbonizing uh, the concrete, for example. So and also the thermal insulation or to put uh, in the window just uh, a bio um, cloth or the the material that you lay under wooden floor or for sound and and a little bit of heat um so hemp is really picking up and it's also picking up in the terms that um it's very interesting for to to call it like it's local it's even local material Okay. Um, so we, we definitely see it and we see it also a lot in the food industry. And I really uh, loved what Sunshine was talking about, uh, to look into the cannabis industry and take the stems from them. So we are, we are first and foremost now focusing on the food industry because the building industry is so big. You need so big uh, investment. So we start with the food uh, and then to use the waste streams to the building industry. And we really see a big interest in the food and beverage and cosmetic industry. And it all comes together because it's it, it's important to see this as a circular mm. uh, circular plan that can give, help us, as you said, also with Agenda 2030 and the different missions we have. Completely. And using the whole plant. And this is what people often don't understand is, you know, you can have a high THC plant and still use the biomass from the plant for all these applications. I know on our medical farms uh, in South Africa, you have to destroy uh, the leaves and the stalks, um, which is completely counterintuitive because you're essentially just flushing money down the toilet. But those are the things we have to deal with in this fight to get uh, hemp sort of uh, into the mainstream. Um, Sean, I know you're a structural engineer and you know obviously Afrimat do a lot of all, all the bricks. Uh, what is your sort of insight into the structural uh, integrity of that. And then I also would like to just get some insights into the hotel that's been built. I know you've been there a lot and I've got a few pictures I'd love to show. So maybe you could just give us a quick walk through that. But what is your uh, experience in terms of structural integrity of, of hemp building? Yeah, so the the um, hemp kit blocks that we um, sort of produce and manufacture, um, that is obviously for infill only. Um, so that means your substructures should still be intact. And then, of course, um, instead of using cement blocks or any other blocks that uh, some people use in, in South Africa, then you can uh, use hempcrete blocks. Um, yeah, so at the moment, um, the highest building structure in the world that has hempcrete used in it is in Cape Town and um, we almost done with that building and there's another one coming up soon. Um, yeah, some pictures and, out, just what, show those. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so basically this was a facade retention up to the seventh uh, level and then from seventh to the thirteenth level there is, um, it was, so the, the envelope is in uh, brick and mortar and then it, in, all internal walls and infill walls were done in uh, hemp hempcrete blocks and uh, plastered with lime and hemp lime uh, sort of plasters and uh, yeah so that's that's the the, the the gist of it we've also recently um, end of last year had of because up to now we had to import the shift from uh, various uh, countries in in the uh, Europe, including France, and uh, we've actually had our first product project the in December that was 
from made from local chef and it was a very very lovely sustainability story because it was uh, from a medicinal farm in uh, Gauteng that uh, sold the biomass to a, cl uh, a homeowner that wanted to build their own home and this was an in situ cost building so they used shut off shuttering to to basically um, cost the, the hempcrete in, or not cost, but to tamper the hempcrete in between the, the shutters. And that was uh, lo the first local chef um, use, or like house that was using a locally, uh, um, local chef. Um, and yeah, very exciting story. And since then, of course, um, all blocks that's manufactured now is done with local chef. Um, of course, re, um, sourcing these are um, still not uh, available everywhere. But uh, yeah, we also have connections in the Eastern Cape and trying to use medicinal, but also cannabis uh, from Dacha farmers and so on. So yeah, this um, entire supply chain or uh, waste products, as uh, Clara was also mentioning, from other industries that we're trying to utilize and uh, use in our blocks. Yeah. Tell me, um, I know that the the finish when you plaster, it's a very beautiful natural finish. If people want to color that finish, obviously, you know, if you're paint, if you're putting paint over the top of that, I, I, I'm assuming that you're losing uh, some of those breathable properties. Um, how, can you color? Do you color the actual? The plaster or can you paint over it or how, how can you change the dynamic of the actual color is that possible yes yeah, so you have two different plasters the one is a hemp plast which has the small shift in it so that obviously people want for the aesthetic um, sort of uh, reasons they want to keep it natural and then lime some people want it natural um, the benefit with keeping it natural is you don't have to paint it every like few years you can high pressure hose it down to clean it and it is um there's no problem with waterproofing and all of that uh or water resistant um then if you want to color it of course you can either um i mean in south africa i know some countries in europe as well and probably other countries in other areas of the world they use uh like a kind of a lime wash for the for their heritage buildings um and this is also something that we've um We've taken a product that was developed in the 70s, Cluex, that was also done with one of the Afrimat, Afrimat companies. And we've basically taken it a little, a few steps further and developed a paint. So you have a breathable paint. You also have other suppliers that create these breathable paints, but then you can literally color it or paint it any color. Um, the other alternative is that with the lime plasters, we also um, have a range of different colors in grays and um, yeah, uh, like ter okay. terracotta sort of natural colors. And yeah, yeah so those yeah. are the different options. Okay, fantastic. Thanks for that, Sean. Um, Sunshine, one of the big conversations we have in South Africa is about how we can use hempcrete for RDP housing. So for those of you who don't know, um, you know, we have a lot of people in South Africa, sadly, living in, in tin shacks um, or houses that just haven't been built very well. Um, can you tell us about some of the, the, the opportunities to, to, to essentially build houses for these communities, you know, low cost, uh, mold resistant, breathable, fire resistant, you know, in some of the more densely township populated areas where people are living quite close to each other. We have a challenge here, especially in the winter when your gas stoves fall over and, and literally it can rip through uh, lots of houses. So, you know, the hemp, hemp uh, creep building has the potential to deal with that. But maybe just give us some insight in how hemp can really benefit people in those kind of areas. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, uh, moderator. I, I think this is a, a very, very important issue. Uh, while still at CSIR, we were grappling with the issue for a very, very important reason is that uh, we that are in this sector, uh, you know, we need to first uh, get, uh, you know, market penetration within the middle class and upper class and companies. Uh, because I can tell you, uh, you know, now is that when we would want to push this technology to the low cost housing, which is your RTP housing, people you, you would tend to 
reject it because they would not have seen it from people that are in the middle and upper class. You know, and this is uh, one of the things that we need to pay uh, special attention. Let's use government procurement and of building government offices uh, so that people can see that this technology is not meant for us and they can be educated on the importance of hempcrete of having a breathable house uh, contrasting to the brick and mortar house that we have and then we then we gradually penetrate the low cost housing you know after we have educated and empowered uh, you know people to understand uh, you know the advantages of this technology uh, this is uh, an advice that come uh, from a lay person uh, and it's something that uh, we uh, that are in this space we need to pay a particular attention to all of these nuances in a country uh, you know as opinionated as south africa so this is how uh, uh, you know moderator i can express myself on this matter that the priority let's demonstrate the use of this technology to people that are in the middle and upper income bracket as well as those companies uh, that uh, you know embrace uh, you know um, uh, this uh, 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 you know, technology, uh, and then we gradually get into your low-cost uh, housing market because we would have established a good track record, uh, you know, that demonstrated all the issues that comes with, uh, you know, having a breathable uh, building uh, made from hempcrete. Great, thanks for that, right, sunshine. Yes, I mean it's uh, very interesting the the perception. You know, I mean, I, I often have to say when we show these bricks to people that you can't get high from smoking the brick, you know, we're still having to deal with those uh, archaic uh, views, but that's just the way it is. Uh, we're going to take a two second break. And then when we come back, we've actually got a winner of the course. And then I want to unpack costing uh, and sort of uh, where, where things are at sort of globally at the moment in terms of price. The legal cannabis industry in Africa is predicted to be worth more than $7.1 billion annually by 2023. And cannabis has the potential to have a significant positive impact on our economies, facilitating job creation and assisting communities by making a living, as well as contributing to an overall improvement of our continent's health. But it is going to take a consolidated effort by a lot of people working together to help realize its full potential. As Africa's leading cannabis educator, the Chiba Cannabis Academy is committed to providing accurate, relevant, current, and trustworthy cannabis information and training for the African continent. Our medical cannabis content is brought to you in partnership with America's leading online medical cannabis educator, Medical Marijuana 411. We offer courses that are accredited by the HPCSA for CPD points and are endorsed by the University of Limpopo and Edupark. We offer online self-study courses, blended courses where students enroll in virtual classes, and contact courses that we deliver through our campuses in Gauteng and Klesenberg Bay. As our facilities, you will learn to grow both commercially and for personal use about medicinal cannabis and how it works with our bodies. Canna Business, where we explore the full cannabis supply chain and about sustainability and wellness. Equipping our students with the knowledge, skills and network needed to lead and succeed in our rapidly evolving cannabis industry. We are driven by purpose, passion and a lasting commitment to working towards making our planet a better place. So join us on this exciting journey at the Chiba Cannabis Academy, an elevated cannabis experience. There we go. Welcome back, guys. So there's yeah, lots of uh, different kind of courses that we do. Um, but the winner of this uh, Hemp Creek course we're running in a few weeks is Lucy Matembu. So well done, Lucy. Congratulations on the course. in touch uh, to sort that out and to get some more details to you don't forget that if you want to book that course we do have a discount so you can use hempcrete20 uh, at checkout uh, so if you'd like to join that next course in september 1st and 2nd 
It's a really deep course, unpacking everything we're doing, but actually getting your hands dirty and rolling your sleeves up. Guys, I want to get into cost, okay? Because that's always the big thing. You know, we need critical mass to bring the cost down. Where are things at the moment? So, Daniel, maybe just in terms of your industry, you're quite developed there. You know, how does it compare to traditional building methodologies at the moment? It's very difficult to compare with traditional buildings. What's a traditional building in France? Uh, um, it's very difficult. So if you if you compare a, a building uh, with no no uh, uh, with material with the uh, high uh, footprint uh, and so on, we are more expensive for sure. We are a little bit more expensive. Well, you have seen uh, in the presentation uh, where the, uh, the first building, we were two to three percent uh, more expensive than if it was with traditional buildings. Uh, so it's a little bit more expensive. But uh, now in France, the more and more people are seeing the uh, long term. Uh, a, a building with M-crete, uh, you can have the, this building for 100 years. Uh, with traditional, uh, traditional uh, wood wall, uh, uh, rock wool, sorry, or uh, uh, glass wool or, or so on, you have to remove the, the product af after 20 years. So uh, if you see a long term, uh, the, the, the M-crete, Create building are less expensive, and more and more people are seeing that. The second thing is that uh, political uh, French political uh, say that when you you use hempcrete, you use local hemp, you use local lime, and you use local people for uh, for using it, and you develop a lot local economy and local employment and so on. So we have. Help uh, of government to relocalize, relocalize the the people to work in a uh, very very local. So uh, yes, we are a little bit more expensive, but not so much. Uh, and um, if you have a, a long term uh, vision, uh, hempcrete is less less expensive. Yeah, great. That's uh, really good to know. Clara, how do we get critical mass? How do we get people to get into this? Uh, I think that uh, what we're going to see is also that uh, carbon sequestration and carbon storage is going to be a monetary term. So you can already sell carbon credits on the global market. Uh, so you can also farm carbon uh, and then you can store the carbon in the houses. So I think the critical mass is uh, that it's going to be a monetary uh, value connected to the carbon storage uh, and this is not something that we're going to see pretty soon here in the EU and probably in the rest of the world so that uh, since everything unfortunately often is about money that is going to put value on the hempcrete uh, and then of course it it's education and uh, that uh, to inform people more and more about this. But uh, most people want to live in a healthy house and healthy homes. And we also know that a lot of houses needs to be rebuilt. And also, I want to look at the bigger picture because we've been talking about South Africa and there it's uh, it's uh, Africa's most uh, industrialized economy, and still it has one of the highest rates of uh, unemployment in the world. So if we look at South Africa and hemp, for example, now even not focusing on, on Sweden um, for my term, because I've lived on and off in South Africa since 20 years back. So it's a big, big thing for me to, to contribute to uh, something better for South Africa. So there's gonna be a new market. So that is also critical mass. Uh, that we can get workforce, youth uh, development, uh, and uh, to bring in job opportunities uh, for people. So that's where I think that uh, the critical mass is. And also the circularity. Um, I, I was shocked to hear that you had to throw away waste from the medical marijuana. I mean, and then you have power crisis in South Africa at the same time. You could make pellets and burn it. 
and and then you wouldn't have so much power uh, crisis in the country. So you really need to look at the bigger picture, and that is. Uh, I mean, I, you have to be, give some uh, respect also to South Africa's government for having a national master cannabis plan, even though we are many that wish that it moved a little bit faster, but at just least... A, just a little bit, like a little <laughs> bit, like this much faster. Yeah. Hello, 20 years. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> of uh, uh, of uh, working on this, um, but in, and also as uh, Sunshine said that we need to bring it to the middle class and the upper class. But uh, from being a person that's been living on and off for twenty years in an RDP house, it's so important that uh, we have healthy homes because it's sick house syndrome. So people are dying from living in toxic conditions. So it's about basic free basic services. So I'm so pleased. I almost started to cry to hear that uh, there is uh, a machine uh, with Afrimat uh, so that you can work with your local and national uh, shives. That is amazing. So, yeah. well, clearly, yeah. we're just, I mean, we're, we are to some degree trying to figure it out as we go along. And that's why, you know, sessions like this are amazing. You guys have obviously got a lot of experience. Sunshine, how do we catalyze this in this country and bring it online? in a faster, more effective way? Uh, I think uh, we have a window of opportunity uh, that tomorrow this team that is assembled in this webinar, uh, Trenton, through Chiba Academy, uh, because uh, uh, to which extent will we be able to maintain the network that we have here and exploit that window of opportunity that uh, Come, uh, that came from the resolution of the recent Operation Pakisa, uh, you know, in terms of the mainstreaming of your indigenous cannabis uh, growers. Here you have Afrimet that have got the technology, the know-how, and you have Clara and you have got Daniel with the international expertise. How then do we quickly move from talking, assemble, work teams that would go as early as next, uh, next week to engage directly with the indigenous cannabis growers and through government, we start collecting the biomass that is already there. And we need to also pay attention uh, to the issue of us not having the relevancy code in terms of what is the true value of your sheaves, uh, you know, in South Africa. So those are some of the things that we need to, uh, you know, engage as a matter of agency and we can have and establish this working team as soon as possible, and we can roll all, all our sleeve and work with the indigenous cannabis growers, as well as those that are operating your medicinal cannabis as, a, as an entry point of collecting the biomass, use the technology in an ecosystem a, you know, environment, because the truth of the matter, if we don't work as strategic partners a, you know, on this, we would not achieve the desired impact uh, you know, uh, within the shortest possible time. Eastern Cape has almost more than 60% unemployed youth. And mm -hmm. here we have technologies that could be decentralized to the local villages where people can begin to extract uh, you know, fibers and we have the sheaves, have the collection point and then begin the process of industrialization as a matter of agency. We have a support from the political uh, leadership of the province. Uh, our premier was one of the first premier that said premier Oscar Mabuyane that Eastern Cape will develop a cannabis industry. So we do have at a political level, that strong support. We, that who have the technology, needs to work uh, together with those entity of government, form these working teams, learn from the strategic partners globally, and then begin to transfer this knowledge to our people and get things done. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that. So I think there has been, uh, for those of our international uh, guests, we, we recently had a government, Pakisa, where there was, you know, a hundred of us in a room uh, discussing how we can move this industry forward. Uh, I think we've got to also remember this is one of the most important industries of our time and vitally important for for the environment. So there's 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 just no time to waste. Sean, some of the challenges you guys have had, you know, getting this thing off the ground. I heard um, at one point you were trying to bring in a whole lot of sort of stalks and biomass in from the Eastern Cape, but because of the 
sort of legal precedent at the moment uh, that there was a concern about you, you know, transporting technically an illegal product? Is that something that's still happening? Um, you know, what, what, what sort of barriers are you finding that we need to smash down to make sure this comes online as quickly as possible? Yeah, thank you. That I mean, that of course is something I think close to all of our hearts is to to actually have access to these um, areas in the industry that could, with uh, waste products and low hanging fruits, um, to access those. Um, yeah, so we've had a team recently up into some deep rural areas in the Eastern Cape. Um, and yeah, the plan is, I think, currently is to move the machine there and to process it. And then uh, I think there's no problem in transporting the, the actual ship. So, yeah, so I think as far as I am aware, that is the plan at the moment, um, which is very exciting. And I mean, what uh, Sunshine is also saying, I mean, that's, that, is, that, is, that is something that I would love to to see happening is for the Eastern Cape to actually um, is a, a place that uh, have more opportunity for the youth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's absolutely key at the moment. Guys, we're almost out of time. Uh, so I just wanted to throw it open to the floor. Um, any other advice you can give to anybody who wants to build with, with Hempcrete? You just unpack some of the, 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 the building codes quickly um, and some of the things that need to be considered before you're actually using the construction. Any any takers? Any volunteers? I I would like to say that uh, Laura. Yeah, I'm. I think it's. Uh, I'm the least experienced here of uh, Sharon and and Daniel, but I, th I still think it's um, important to remember that it's a chemical reaction that needs to happen between uh, the water and the lime and and the shives. So. That's where the standard is coming from, and that uh, it's a different thing uh, when we talk about DIY. And I love uh, the bricks, and I understand uh, totally because that's how how the houses are being built in South Africa. Um, so I think that it's also important to stay flexible in the mind. So even if it has been done in a certain way in countries, uh, to still be open for that country's artisan. And in in South Africa, okay, here we build with bricks. Then to be open for that, but to remember also that there is a chemical and physical reaction that needs to take place uh, and uh, a standardization, of course. So thank you so much, and I'm so I'm so I'm so overwhelmed by this webinar, and I'm so blown away by everything that Sunshine uh, said because I'm like 100% on the same. Great. So we've got one minute to go, Sunshine. You had your hand up. Do you want to quickly say something? Yeah, uh, I think there's an issue that uh, Clara raised, uh, you know, here at uh, Trenton that we need to take into consideration. What we need to do, uh, you know, moving forward is to begin to do a scientific study where you would have the current different models of the, uh, uh, you know, low cost housing. And we have, you know, a, a low cost housing sample uh, from Hemkrit. And we look at some of the issues uh, that she raised, the issues of your sickness, your energy intensity, or your energy inefficiency of this low cost housing. So that, you know, all of those costs, you know, to heat up this uh, low cost housing in winter, it just set the, uh, you know, the owners uh, of that houses uh, uh, economically backwards so that we can have a, a structured way of measuring you know, those advantages and looking at converting it into monetary terms, then we'll then be see the true actual value of having a, a, a hemcrete house vis-a-vis uh, -vis the current low-cost housing. And I think mm -hmm. that those are the things that uh, we need to do uh, uh, in the Eastern Cape and in South Africa as a matter of agency. Fantastic. That's a fantastic way to end, uh, Sunshine. Share the knowledge. Uh, Daniel, we're out of time, but quickly, let's just uh, get a quick comment. Very, from very you. quick, quickly. Uh, I would be very happy to to help anybody uh, uh, with uh, knowledge we have had uh, during thirty years. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, I, I'm here to 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 help everybody on uh, on the developing this market as we do a long time ago. 
Amazing. I think uh, I think that that deserves a round of applause. Stronger together we build, guys. Thank you so much. Um, really inspiring conversation. I'm so excited about this part of the industry. Just the tip of the iceberg. You know, this is just one part of the hemp industry. Uh, it doesn't come without its challenges, but we've just got to push forward, drive this, make it happen. Uh, especially for countries like South Africa, developing economies, I think it can be really powerful. Thank you so much for being here. Have a beautiful evening, day, wherever you are. To everyone in uh, Las Vegas and South America and people from all over the world, which is really amazing. This community is starting to build. Uh, thank you so much. Take care and uh, we'll see you soon.